board. <laughs> are, are, we, are we assigned on headlines, or is Tom going to read them? And we're oh, gonna... crap. Yes. Yeah, uh, I didn't see any earlier, but um, hey, do that. They right are right. in order. I just needed to gotcha. put the, the initials by them. Hi, video viewers. What's happening? Oh, Did you know that you're about to watch a show? Okay. Are we good? Yeah, no, it sounds like they can't hear us, but maybe that's not my problem. Can't hear you? AGR is not working. That's oh, what crap. They missed all of that spider talk. That is really too bad. That's I was, really You know what? Bad, yeah. That's actually what made me go looking for a problem because I was like, the chat room really should be responding to this, this spider situation. I'm going to go check and see if it's still there. Okay. While you fix that. I'm fixing video viewers. You've got to wait on audio this time. Okay. Now we're fixed. Okay. Yeah. That was the, the thing wasn't plugged into the other thing. Oh, we'll see. Thanks, chat room. Thank you, chat. Bark, bark. It hasn't moved. Okay. Now are we ready? I'm ready. <laughs> Let's do this. I've been ready this whole time. <laughs> I, I was <laughs> conceived ready. <laughs> I was born ready. Here we go. I closed the door so it can't, it can't get me in the show. The Daily Tech News Show is brought to you by people, real people like me and a few thousand others. Now, we understand if you're not in a position to join us right now, but maybe, just maybe, you're someone who could, oh, let's say once a quarter, just four measly times a year, take a pass on that double shot, no whip, caramel, mocha, loco, hoozy, what's it you buy every day on the way to work, and instead, go to bit.ly slash help DTNS and pledge that money to support the show. See? Value for value. Coffee for tech news. And here's what you get in return. <laughs> This is the Daily Tech News for Tuesday, June 30th, 2015. I'm Tom Merritt. Joining me today, senior correspondent and host of Marketplace, Ms. Bollywood, is back Hello. on the show. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. It's good Hi, to have I'm you. delighted to be here. It's been so long that I forgot how to tab to complete names in the chat room. How embarrassing. Wow. I know. It hasn't been that long, has it? I don't think so. I think I just am a little dingy today. Well, you've got a spider in your bathtub. I have a spider. That will distract anyone. I'm a mess, you guys. I have a sty in my eye. And a spider in my bathtub, which and sounds that's like not a, a start euphemism. Well, of at least a children's book, it. kind of. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, that, that actually it sounds like like a, like a moldy peaches song or something like a <laughs> real like an indie song from the early aughts. I have a sty in my eye. And a spider. I think I heard Zane Lowe play it earlier on Beats One Worldwide. It's my first show. Uh, Justin Robert Young there, co-host of Night Attack, Weird Things, Jury Talks, and contributor to Daily Tech News Show and Spider Conqueror. Yeah, apparently I've just, uh, I, I, I can now reveal uh, that I have been uh, contracted by Mollywood to go across uh, town in Oakland and destroy a spider. And I will say that I will not rest until that spider is That's around. exactly what I like to hear. Because it was either you or a task rabbit, but I feel better about paying you with both booze and cash. <laughs> <laughs> like, whatever it takes. It's All big, right. the big well, spider. Uh, <laughs> We were, the door is closed. We're assuming the spider will not join us for the show. I don't think it can get me here. Okay. Uh, as long as we're safe, though, uh, we have some news to talk about, shall we? Let's. Here we go. Oz Technica reports that Apple released iOS 8.4 today, fixing the text message bug uh, that caused a crash of your operating system if a certain string of characters was received. Yes, they finally got around to patching that. Uh, iBooks also got some updates, can be used for audiobooks as well as a few other features. And of course, the big news, updated music app includes Apple's new $10 a month music service with a three-month free trial. The Connect social network that lets you follow musicians the For You recommendation engine at Beats One radio station with Zane Lowe worldwide. He says things so that you think everything is very exciting, Molly and Justin. I heard a lady version of Zane Lowe and she was so excited. It was her first show and she loves UK bands. Justin, did you have a chance to listen to any Beats One today? No. <laughs> so you so you don't so you don't have a a British I, DJ I, I, voice I, for us. I'm Zane. No. <laughs> oh. My favorite thing that happened today with the release of Apple Music, and then we should stop giving it even more press, was all the journalists 
ahem, I'm using that term slightly loosely, live tweeting their Beats 1 radio station as though they were not all listening to the exact same station. Like, dude, the song that you're getting is also playing for everyone else because it's a radio station. Uh, listeners, brush the embers off your jacket because that <laughs> is the sound and feel of Molly Wood sharpening her axe to go after <laughs> anybody who periscoped uh, loading up Apple Music this morning. I'm just saying, it friggin' happened. It happened. I was like, I'm going to periscope my Spotify playlist right now. I also loved how Zane Lowe uh, introduced and outroed every single song. I, got, I, I, got, I suppose that's the thing. It was very radio. Everything, there was worldwide, worldwide, worldwide. And then he played like Pharrell's new exclusive track twice. Because that's what I do. Anyone <laughs> who knows me. Um, it was so radio. Um, it, that, they've, got a lot, they've got a lot to prove, right? Like they have to prove why this exists, who it's for. And, I, you know, I, I almost, I don't want to destroy, or I don't want to really get super critical and I think Molly's right to get critical about people who are making a big deal about like opening an app and playing a radio station. Thank but, you. Uh, I, you know, I think it's going to be interesting to see where this evolves because for a lot of the talent, including Zane Lowe and Ebro from Hot 97, this is kind of just them doing exactly what they're doing anyway, but totally. on a different platform. So I, I want to know where they find the freedom in a way that satellite radio is different than real radio in terms of tone, content, and how they go about playing what they do. And the one cool concept was that when Zane Lowe left and the next DJ came in, it's, the personality changed. Mm -hmm. the, the, the selection of music changed. It was definitely not some kind of formatted playlist. Uh, that She was playing two songs in a row without talking. Uh, you well, know, it was except that sometimes she would talk during that song. Yeah, well, that, then there was the DJ after her, right, which oh. is the one you were listening to, where I she would so. she was doing the same thing that Zane did, where they would talk over while the singing was happening, which is I mean, apparently I, a thing. I do, I definitely agree that you know I'm, I'm trying to go into the whole package and all of its many many components. It's kind of like this has been a weird Apple or an unApple Apple trend lately, which is like complicated stuff. The Apple Watch is complicated. It's sort of tricky to use. Apple Music, the whole package is complicated to explain between the Connect and like which part's free and which is not free and which part is radio but not the same as a... a it, like there doesn't appear to be a way to put together a Spotify-style radio where you just start one based on a song, but there's a... Ra anyway, it's complicated. I'm trying to go in with an open mind because I'm such a long-time Spotify user and I have so many playlists that I've curated. However, all that said... There's no question that Beats 1 is different. And if you're going to come into this streaming music space, which is really crowded, you should be different. Well, and we, we had a, a story that I don't know if we really went over, uh, but, but we discussed in the Slack last week about how much people still listen to radio, and specifically young people listen to radio. And, and I would take a guess that a lot of it is class-based, is that... A lot of people, like, you know, the, the idea that satellite radio, something that you needed a different piece of equipment for and had to pay a subscription for, was always going to be a luxury proposition. However, in an era where an iPhone, although being a fairly expensive, uh, a fairly expensive uh, piece of equipment, is not thought of as luxury in the way that it maybe even once was three or four years ago because there's older models that have iOS that are fairly cheap, if not free to get, with a contract. The idea that a radio station you know, could succeed there isn't as insane as I think the nattering class who today were breathlessly talking about how they could play songs that uh, they could type into a search box uh, were making, were, were sneering at it when it was first announced. Yeah, a lot of people still listen to terrestrial radio. So this is, and, and some of the things that I am parodying here is just radio. That's just what radio yeah. has been doing for a long time. So, and it's, you know, it's, it's really over the top. It's a little over the top and it's a very specific sound. If they started, if they, but you know, they've got channels, I assume, or they're going to have channels. I mean, I don't think, I, I think you're absolutely right, Justin. It's a, it's an equal opportunity product. It's the free product. What I'm curious to see is whether the free product will usurp the paid product. Because to me, the big challenge is how do you get people to pay? We uh, are daily. We are tech. Reason. We are news and it's a show. And we have nothing but tech Hello. news worldwide. Hello, Bogota, Philippines, London, <laughs> Mollywood next with a Cisco headline. TechCrunch reports that Cisco. I'm going to stop that. 
<laughs> can't, that can't last. TechCrunch reports that Cisco is buying OpenDNS for $635 million in cash. You wouldn't have thought they were for sale, would you? OpenDNS brings, brings Cisco traditional network edge protection. It runs 24 data centers and claims more than 2% of the world's DNS traffic with 100% uptime. Many of you experiencing the Bay Area Comcast outage probably switched to them recently. Cisco says it will continue to offer the free version of OpenDNS, although it will probably just start tracking all your traffic. Oh, I hope not. <laughs> and I hope we get some reassurances about that. But yeah, I mean, they're saying all the right things, saying OpenDNS will remain as it is right now. Yep. Mm. Yeah. I mean, you think? <laughs> hope. <laughs> I don't know, but if you can, if you don't care, you can do the next headline. Yeah. <laughs> Fortune reports a U.S. Second Circuit Court in New York upheld a 2013 verdict that Apple organized an illegal conspiracy with five book publishers to raise the price of e-books. The publishers have all settled out of court. Apple agreed last year to pay 450 million to customers if it lost the appeal. Now, this case very interesting for the e-book market. Very, very interesting if you look at it in terms of how they are organizing with some of the music labels, considering you have a very pissed off, active competitor in Spotify that is looking for any and every reason to prove that Apple is acting illegally and organizing the deals that they have. I don't know. Yeah, and they, they hella did that. Apple's only option now would be to go to the Supreme Court and... That's possible, but it sounds like they they they're throwing in the towel because I mean, part of the reason is because they agreed already to pay this money if they lost this court case. Also, so, to them, it's like none. So that's no money. It's four hundred fifty million dollars. Yeah, very small. What do you think it costs me. more, uh, th that penalty or appealing Taylor Swift's Tumblr? <laughs> what Probably I Taylor Swift's Tumblr. By Taylor Swift, yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah. Well, I guess it depends on how many people download it, right? How many people are are, are on the free trial? Yeah, but uh, they already played uh, Bad Blood on Beats One earlier today, so king. Apparently, they got mad love. Yeah. And Gadget reports the European Parliament and European Commission have agreed on a plan to eliminate roaming fees within Europe. Roaming charges will be limited starting in April 2016. To numbers in euros, 20 cents per megabyte, 6 cents per SMS, and 5 cents per minute. So that's euro cents. And they'll go away entirely on June 15th, 2017. New rules for an open internet were also agreed upon-ish. <laughs> Starting April 30th, 2016, ISPs will be banned from blocking and throttling online content and services with one exception quote, specialized services of higher quality, and that could include IPTV, people think, can receive special treatment as long as it doesn't affect the rest of the open internet and also zero rating is okay. Now, this is for mobile, but it's very much leaving a wide open door for you to have fast lanes. Mm-hmm. It, well, straight up fast lanes. I mean, I mean they said there are no fast lanes Except for those fast lanes. Except, except for, for fast those fast lanes. lanes. Except for the yeah. fast lanes that would, you know, deliver potential. I mean, there's. And they said so they can't affect the open internet, but the wording is so vague, people are worried, like, well, how do you, how do you prove it's affecting it? What, what does that mean? What does that even mean? I mean, if Comcast, for example, set up a fast lane so it could deliver its own content more quickly over on demand, that wouldn't necessarily affect the open internet. It would just affect anybody also trying to deliver content to my house over Comcast. Right. Exactly. And, and, and this is just over their wireless networks. Now, granted, this is still better than the rules that they have now, uh, which would allow this to be done at any time for any reason, whether it degraded internet traffic or not. Right. Uh, but a lot of people are very upset. They, they feel like this is a bait and switch. Yep. ZDNet's Mary Jo Foley reports that Microsoft released Windows 10 Build 101.5.8 with the Edge branding for the Project Spartan browser, unfortunately, because I liked Project Spartan. Uh, the new app, I believe, will cause any favorites, cookies, history, or reading list items that are saved in Spartan to be lost if you don't back them up before the update. The new build also includes updates to Continuum, Photos and the Snipping Tool apps, and bug fixes for Surface 3 and Surface 3 Pro. Microsoft will also release a test build of the Windows 10 software development kit to insiders, which includes an emulator for Windows 10 Mobile. So you can get to work on that Windows 10 Mobile app. Edge. Edge. Won't, won't. Edge. Spartan! <laughs> You're right. Uh, Reuters reports, uh, 
Thibaut Simfal, manager of Uber France, and Pierre Dimitri Gorkodi, general manager for Western Europe, will stand trial in France on September 30th. The Uber executives face charges of deceitful commercial practices, being complicit in illegal operation of a taxi service, and keeping and using personal data without authorization. Uber is separately fighting a October 2014 law banning apps that put clients in touch with unregistered drivers. So essentially, Uber's fighting a law that was passed specifically to make Uber pop illegal, yeah. and then they got hauled in to the police station and charged with violating these other crimes. Uber's having a kind of a crazy week. Yeah. But yeah. Also, could you just go ahead and say that name again? That was. Oh, okay. So here um, we go. This is yeah. Thibaut. Is it Thibaut? Thibaut. Show me. <laughs> Simpa. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, this is, I mean, obviously Uber has a, a long and storied history of fighting local regulations. Uh, I actually thought, uh, you know, in looking at the landscape, that maybe someplace like Las Vegas with a very entrenched taxi union would be a, a uh, among the bloodier fights that they would fight. But that has not held a candle to what's going on in France right now. Man, they... Uh, but they 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 go hard when they when they go at all. Yeah, they're well. I mean, Europe is Europe is cracking down. Europe is not having it with these sort of the invasion of the American tech companies. Um, and Uber is sort of the most. Uber is just a very obvious and physical example. And so, but it isn't the first time that Uber executives have been hauled off to jail. I think it happened in Italy too. There was some raid. Maybe it was in Italy, but there was a big raid. Of yeah, I don't think they were actually put in jail. I don't think and I don't were... know if these two were actually ever put in jail, but they, they certainly were pull, pulled in for questioning. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Uber is the more arrogant of the bunch. You well, know, and, the... And, and, and for whatever, I think we can, we can very much, there's a, enough evidence to call them arrogant, right? Yes. But you you can certainly say aggressive, modestly. Right, like I think they would consider themselves to be a very aggressive company when it comes to fighting uh, regulations that they believe hampers their business. Yeah, and that they believe hurt consumers. And I, they're, I'm not they're, saying they're that, leading. But. Uber is leading a protest in Brooklyn uh, to to preserve jobs in Brooklyn, and they printed out signs for everybody that they have protesting. They're very nice. They're very neatly printed signs. The most <laughs> neatly printed protest signs I've ever seen. Huh? Like they're not messing around either. No. On their end, they're they're willing to risk being pulled into the the police station in Paris and going on trial. Like they're they willing, don't back down. They are aggressive. No sleep until right. Brooklyn. So Brooklyn changes yeah. regulations. <laughs> Xiaomi announced that the Redmi Two handset will be available in Brazil for four hundred ninety nine Brazilian real. That right now is roughly one hundred sixty dollars U.S. This is according to the Next Web. Xiaomi has a deal with Foxconn to manufacture the handsets in Brazil, so they'll be built locally. The Redmi 2 features a 4.7-inch screen, dual SIM supporting 2G, 3G, and 4G, and an 8-megapixel rear camera with an f2.2 aperture available in dark gray. Only the one color at launch, anyway. TechCrunch reports Amazon is launching physical good sales in Mexico at Amazon.com.mx. Amazon previously only sold ebooks in that country, and it's also launching online selling and fulfillment services for the Mexican business. This puts them in competition with Mercado Libre, Walmart, and Inditex. Mexico's e-commerce sector is growing at 34% annually. And Forrester and just, was, got a, just got a nice little boost. Yeah, Forrester was predicting like 114% growth over the next few years before Amazon announced they were opening this. Uh, so so e-commerce booming there. And booming. Yeah. Booming. You know what else is booming? Our subreddit, dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com. Get in there and let us know what you want to hear us talk about. It helps us put together the lineup. SP Sheridan did this. He noted the Recode report that Microsoft is selling its aerial 3D and street-level map image operation to Uber previously mentioned Uber. 100 employees will transfer to Uber as part of the deal, as well as a Boulder, Colorado data center and some intellectual property licenses. Uh, they'll continue to, to do their own mapping operation on Bing. They buy a lot of that data from Nokia's Here division already. And anybody who thought Microsoft might buy Nokia Here, this looks like they're going the opposite direction and saying, mm, we really don't want to operate that section. We just want to buy that data. 
Yeah, Microsoft divesting all over the place. Motang points out that the Wall Street Journal reports AOL will take over sales of display, mobile, and video ads on Microsoft properties in the U.S. and eight other markets. 1,200 Microsoft employees will be offered jobs at AOL, and Bing will now become the search engine for AOL properties for 10 years, and Microsoft will continue to sell its own search ads. They have sort of a revenue share deal there, but this is one of those deals where you kind of wouldn't expect such good decision-making from these two sort of internet dinosaurs. Well, Microsoft, it's a win-win, win-win-win. I mean, this is the shakeout, right? Microsoft says, well, we tried programmatic ads. You know who's better at it than us? AOL. But you know what? We've got a really good search engine, and we can strike a deal. And now AOL is giving Bing a boost with market share, and, uh, and Microsoft's giving AOL a boost in, in what they want to be good at, which is programmatic ad sales. It's a win for everybody. Here. And they also get a huge boost in terms of scale. They get to sell across all those Microsoft properties. Yep which like inexplicably and MSN is still huge. They yeah. get to sell into this really young audience of Xbox people. Yeah, it's a really I was like that is a heck of a good deal for everybody. Microsoft making all these deals that make sense. Tom, if I didn't know any better, I would say that Sacha Mania continues to run wild on you, brother. Sacha Mania. <laughs> He's the CEO of 2015 in my opinion. Teespring.com. Especially now that in my mind he just became, he's wearing Spangly. He's wearing spandex. <laughs> uh, th AOL, Yahoo, Firefox. I, I know Google's got predominance in Europe right now, but uh, Bing is definitely creating the deals to take a chunk out of Google's market share. Uh, it's on iOS too. It's the iOS. iOS, so it's exactly. Yeah, right. Yeah. And not you know, in all cases, not in the browser, right? But, but right. in Siri. Yeah. That this what we are entering into the next five years might be the most pivotal for Google protecting their golden eggs, which is AdWords, is, is very much in play because from both ends, both the traditional ad search or the, the traditional search box web page model and, you know, Apple's whole strategy to be the new search from within your device as opposed to going to somewhere else and always doing web search mm -hmm. uh, is, is, is very much a, a real thing for them. This, this is a very pivotal time for Google. And that is yep. a look at the headlines. All right, for our main discussion today, uh, Molly pointed out a New York Times article uh, that was out yesterday. Natasha Singer and Jeremy B. Merrill wrote about what companies do with your data when they either sell or break themselves up or go bankrupt, uh, noting that, for instance, in the Hulu privacy policy, uh, they are very good about saying they will not sell to third parties, they will protect your privacy, they will protect your data, except for a clause that says, if we sell all or part of our business, make a transfer of assets, or are otherwise involved in a change of control transaction, or in the unlikely event of bankruptcy, I like they have to call it unlikely even in their terms, right. uh, we may transfer information from or about you to one or more third parties as part of the transaction. And this is now a common boilerplate piece of information in privacy policies. There's similar clauses in 85 of the top 100 Alexa sites, according to the New York Times, they, they went through and looked at all of those, uh, a few of them will allow customers to opt out of such a transfer in the case of a sale. But we've seven. seen uh, Toy Smart, is it seven of them, Will? Seven, 17. 17 of them, Will. Uh, Toy Smart, True.com, Radio Shack have all had battles with the FTC about wanting to sell off parts of their company, including their customer database. Which is partly why apparently this the Times is reporting partly why some of this language went in, didn't maybe didn't maybe previously exist and very specifically went into these clauses. And I, the reason I thought this was interesting is because we, it feels like we're a, we're approaching. I would I th I hope <laughs> a privacy tipping point, a data or at least a data collection awareness tipping point, and we haven't been able to. You know, when we argue against sort of rampant data collection, we haven't been able to point to any specific, I mean, there have been no specific harms to some extent, right? Like you might get a database breach that contains social security numbers and credit card numbers, but they're always, they're generally looking for a lot of the same information. It's hard to explain why data collection is bad other than it's kind of creepy and you wish they weren't targeting you and they won't tell you and they won't let you opt out. The, but your information being sold to a party that you've never interacted with is that to me is a measurable harm. That is just not, it's not acceptable. And it's amazing that it is standard practice for 85 of the 100 biggest websites. Well, the issue is just how valuable this is to companies, mm -hmm. right? Like that, that very often 
a, a lot of let's say let's take something like Radio Shack, which has a lot of assets for which are hard to move. You know, they have to. You know, when a company goes into bankruptcy, very often you hire liquidation specialists just to get rid of uh, the the stock that they have on hand. The idea of physical retail stores are only really attractive to very very few select buyers. But data, information, phone numbers, uh, you know, whatever they can, and that's before we get into uh, you know companies that like let's say. If, if a company like Apple or Amazon or something that has that prides themselves on their one-click, uh, you know, credit card storing kind of stuff, like if one of those companies really, really, really made a play to sell something or a part of that or uh, to to somebody else, yeah, you know, this is intensely valuable to so many different people. Uh, if even just advertising, you know, there's as display advertising has become less and less relevant, any way that a company can get into your life and understand who you are, where you go, and when you would want to buy their product is the, the future. I mean, it's not valuable. It is the only thing. It's the only, and for, yeah, for if you're a digital only company and you have very few assets, I could imagine in some cases this data treasure trust being worth more than your IP, you know, where, where companies used to acquire other companies for their patents. <laughs> now they will acquire each other for their data. And here's the thing. The other There's side no of this control. is if I want to sell my company, that customer database being so valuable is essential to someone wanting to buy my company. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and, and so I should be able, right? If I, if I sell the entire company at once, it's not a problem, right? Nobody cares uh, that when Comcast bought NBC Universal, all the customer databases for the NBC web properties went to Comcast, right? Because they bought the whole company. The privacy policy stayed in place. You know, it was, it was just all natural. What the problem is, is when you have a bankruptcy proceeding or you're splitting it up, and suddenly the customer database may be sold independently of any other part of the company. Now that smells like selling off my data to somebody and who knows what they're going to use it for. So the key here is what the FTC has done. They did it with Radio Shack. They did it with Toy Smart is to say, you have to sell your database to somebody who is going to do a similar business than you did and maintain the privacy policy as written. Mm -hmm. I would argue that you could go a step farther and let people opt out of being part of that database. I mean, that that is, you know, if were we to ever, hope springs eternal, get a consumer bill of rights, that should be, I mean, we should be able to opt out of the data collection in the first oh, place. Oh, yeah. I, I think the consumer bill of but, rights should say you own your data, that you have the right to yes. do whatever you want with it. Pull exactly. it back. And that, and, and, but that at minimum, you should be able to opt out of having your data transferred to another company in a sale. But there's no way that will ever happen because, as Justin Wisely points out, like it's massively valuable. It is, in fact, probably the reason that future sales will occur. I mean, life will find a way. The, you know, companies will find a way to acquire uh, mm -hmm. this, this data. Now, to your point, Molly, about uh, a, customer's bill of, uh, a consumer bill of rights, this only happens when these things become kitchen table issues. And, and there was a very interesting tweet that we have here uh, yeah. from the ex-Facebook uh, CTO who co-founded Google Maps, uh, tweeting out that you know it's a time the tech industry acknowledge how creepy retargeting feels. I do so many things in incognito windows just to avoid future ads. And there is no doubt that this is something that kind of gives people the willies. I wonder how much that goes beyond people who have an idea of why this is happening uh, and it's not just, oh, look, that's, that's interesting. I was just on that website two days ago. I don't, yeah, I think people are starting to notice. I think the, the mainstream is starting to say, what I don't like is, what I don't like is when I go to a website and then two days later, there's an ad for a thing that I looked at at that website. I mean, people are starting to see this sort of creepy factor in that because it's totally not transparent. They have no idea why that ad is following them around and how it happened. And because of that, I think we could get to a tipping point, hopefully sooner than later, where it does become something that's part of mainstream consciousness. And people are writing the FTC and the FCC and saying, hey, what is the deal here? I did not give permission for all of my data to be shared between websites. And the FTC writes back and says, oh, honey, are you logged into Facebook? <laughs> yeah, no, that's what happened. Yep, yeah, that's what it was. And, and honestly, as long as I know I have control over who gets what information and it's transparent that they're getting it, I want them to have certain information because these data tracking ads right now are so clumsy. 
When I book a flight to Atlanta and book a hotel, I don't need to book another one right away. That's, and that's what happens, right? And that's what makes it extra yeah. creepy. It's almost an uncanny valley of like, no, you don't understand. You're just stalking me. You You're don't stuck. understand what my needs actually are. And if you did, it might not actually feel creepy. And that's what, I mean, that's what a lot of the advertising industry will argue. Their counter argument is if we were doing our job right, it would be helpful. It would actually be a utility and it wouldn't be creepy, which is possible, right? If you booked that flight and then they offered you a hotel or a coupon, like the, um, do you know this company, Keep, K-I-I-P? It's, uh, the CEO is Brian Wong, who was at Dig, and he's just like a boy genius. But it offers, it's a platform for offering rewards. When you do the things you're already doing, you might get like a coupon or a pack of gum or a free Uber ride if you are a little drunk or whatever. Um, and so the idea is that the advertising can become a utility as opposed to just sort of a naked sales pitch, something that's not useful. I feel like, yes, that's where we want it to be. Right. Two steps beyond where we are. You know, like, like we are good at being dumb in, in that, you know, the, the, the classic uh, Patton Oswalt uh, stand-up routine about his TiVo, you know, when he watches two Westerns and now next thing you know, it's 14 shows about horses that shows up that he never really wants to watch. Uh, that's really where we are right now. Now, and I don't think that we are ever, because it is such, I mean, you mentioned, you know, Apple doing on Apple things and, and the Apple Watch being a complicated device. It is complicated because what we want from this vertical is so personal and so not universal. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants something different. Everybody wants something different out of this magical world that we've just invented where like, yeah, for me, I travel for business. So maybe I do want, maybe I want to know if, if a water park is where I'm going to be and I can now figure out whether or not it's on my day off. If and I'm a casual business traveler or a casual traveler, then maybe I do want to know then in six months whether or not I, a cheap flight to New York has, has popped up. You know, it, it's so different. And what it would take to get to that level of knowledge, to get to that level of accuracy, is, is personal data invasion beyond what we would ever possibly tolerate, right? Like contextual apps are a good example, predictive technology. It has so much promise because an app that lays on your phone and knows everything you're doing could, in theory, give you unbelievably personalized and useful information, except that you would freak the hell out once it started asking you for access to all of the things that it would need access to in order to do that right. And instead you have Amazon, which like, if I already bought it, to your point, Tom, why do I need it again? I or don't want to buy the garlic press again. I only needed one. Or I if I have so bought, much garlic. And if I bought a thing and I sent it to an address that is not mine with someone else's name on it, why is Amazon not smart enough to realize that that's a gift and stop suggesting this weird thing to me that I would never buy and my history suggests I would never purchase? Like, yeah. Amazon is an example of a company that is shockingly bad at personalized recommendation, and they're collecting phenomenal amounts of data about us. And here's phenomenal. the thing. The way to improve that is more data. The yep. way to convince us to give you more data is give us control and you give us transparency. It's the, it's the only way. Otherwise, exactly. the, all the customers are going to continue to fight you and use incognito windows, and a bunch of other people won't, and then get really upset when they find out what you've been doing with their data and push for new laws. Uh, yeah. Not to mention the fact that all these technological advancements, when it comes to ads, could happen. We could have everything there, and we would still have a massive problem when it comes to data collection because we have created a culture that very much says we should not click on an ad because nothing good will come of it. <laughs> and that brings us to our pick of the day, which gets rid of junk mail from your paper spam mailbox, from your physical mailbox. Uh, it's called Paper Karma. Jesse, uh, a.k.a. hometown rival in the subreddit and DTNS contributor from Indianapolis, uh, uses it. It's an iOS, Android, or Windows phone app, and he says, I snap a photo of any junk mail I've received and don't want to receive any more, and Paper Karma will contact the sender and have me removed from their distribution list. Now, it doesn't work if it just says current resident. It has to actually be to your name. Uh, but he says the only downside is junk. It, it, that's the only downside. It's free to download, offers four free unsubscribes. And after that, you'd either need to share the app on Facebook to, ha, 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 to extend your free subscription for three months or pay $10 for a one-year subscription. That's kind of awesome. Yeah, Paper Karma. I haven't tried it, uh, but uh, Jesse seems to like it. So check it out. That's our pick of the day. Man, you want to know what I, I, I love... Uh, 
you know, the the idea of the very manageable bite-sized year-long subscription. Like Pandora for forever used to have the best deal in the business for their pro thing. It was like 13 bucks, you know, for for their pro uh, account and 10 bucks for this is one of those things where you just 10 bucks and you forget it and now you can have this utility. That's such a great price point. Send your picks to feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. You can find my picks at dailytechnewsshow.com slash picks. Uh, one message from Scott Napier in Hagerstown, Maryland, a proud Patreon supporter. Thank you, Scott. Says, early in the headlines yesterday, Veronica mentioned that she thought our search habits have been formed so that if the top results are not what you want, that you did something wrong. He says, well, I take issue with that, but maybe it's just me. For searches where I really know nothing about the topic or product, I quite often scan at least three pages deep. This has come from me trying to ignore or avoid those auto-filled search results that so often fill up quite a lot of the first page and almost never provide me anything useful. This applies even more as the searches become more obscure. Am I the only one who does this? I think that, I mean, it seems increasingly like the top results on any search page, especially in Google, are probably bought and paid for or there as a result of some, I mean, that in first half, sure is, that yeah. first half and people do not realize the difference. I actually think you are doing nothing wrong if you're trying to avoid that because the top results are ads. I mean, Google's cramming them in there. Which is, which is so funny because that was the thing that set them apart from Yahoo when yeah. they, when they really became a, a power player in the business. But I, 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 I think I, I more agree with, with, with Veronica here that the idea of, just refining, like we're so used to and we have a better idea of search mechanics that if you can take the first few uh, results that aren't ads, understand kind of, okay, well that's not where I'm looking for. I'm not looking for instruction videos. I'm looking for more prices on these products. So now I'll just re-enter another line of search uh, as opposed to digging through one line just to see where, where it goes. But by that logic, you can understand more by reading more results. So I, I understand where, uh, where, where Scott's coming from too. Yeah, I, I, I think Scott's got the right idea. I just, I'm, I think Veronica's right that most people don't uh, click, click through to the following pages. Uh, and it, it's interesting, I, I just uh, installed uh, Windows 7 on a brand new ThinkPad X250 and put Firefox on it, which now comes as a default with Yahoo. And I'm like, all right, I'm just gonna use Yahoo search here. And it was not as good. It just yeah. was not finding the pages that I knew what I, I could find in Google. And I don't know how much of that is I've learned how to use Google. I know how to phrase the query so it will come up with something in Google. Maybe that would change if I used Yahoo over the long term. But I'll tell you what, I use those same queries in Bing and Bing returns results just fine. So I do think it, there, you know, there is a qualitative difference there. I think there is. I use DuckDuckGo for yeah. the most part because I like the privacy. Uh, but I do find myself having to go to Google sometimes, especially if I'm looking for recent news, recent information. Change DuckDuckGo's name to like Battle Axe or something. Like, <laughs> like, you know, crazy guy. Like, I don't know. DuckDuckGo is the worst name. <laughs> it is. I do feel like a, a little embarrassed every time I say Personal it. Shield DuckGo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Battle Axe is good. Battle Axe is pretty. Yeah, we'll take a Battle Axe to those killer. who want to invade your privacy. Spider killer. Oh, my God, that makes so much sense because they're crawling the web. Right. <laughs> well, that is it for this episode of Daily Tech News Show. Uh, once again, Molly Wood, thank you so much for joining us. It's always it a pleasure. It has been my pleasure. Go oh, good. And we've, we've taken care of your spider problem. Mm -hmm. uh, we've solved all of the problems in the technology world. Uh, what's left for people I to do? I should really do this every day. But yeah. if you feel like it, you could find me over at Marketplace.org. For those of you who have been, uh, who have been asking, I will be hosting the Kai Rizdal show on July 3rd. So you can get a little like extra taste then. And then most of uh, the end of July and early August, I will be hosting the various shows, Tech Weekend or The Morning Report. Sweet. So keep That'll a listen out. Also, I'm occasionally producing some tech features. Those are going to be airing in the next couple weeks too. <laughs> you know, when I have time. Just follow twitter.com slash Molly Wood. Yeah, you, you know what? It's true. Really good point. Justin Robert Young. Also, twitter.com slash Justin R. Young. Uh, and you've got a busy summer. Oh, man, do I ever. Uh, tell you what, a fun new project that I'm doing uh, right now is testing a card game that will be up on Kickstarter in early August. However, we are sending out beta print and plays. 
We just locked our 100-card print-and-play PDF last night. Uh, and if you follow uh, Contender Game on Twitter, uh, we are, we're, we're looking for some folks that, wanna, that are planning on playing some, some card games over the 4th of July weekend. We'll send you the print-and-play. If you want to print it out, give us feedback. That would be greatly, greatly appreciated. So go ahead and follow at Contender Game on Twitter. That's also the same for Instagram and Facebook. But meanwhile, you can follow me on Twitter at Justin R. Young and on Periscope where I'll be killing uh, Molly Wood's spider in her bathtub and then we'll be streaming Beats 1. <laughs> Excellent. It'll uh, be amazing! Uh, thank you to our patrons, 5,064 folks uh, moving us up the ladder. We are finally on our way towards that video goal that seemed entirely unattainable. Maybe we'll even get it by the end of the year. Who knows? But uh, thanks to everybody who supports the show uh, and everybody who's thinking of supporting the show and is going to go do it right now at dailytechnewsshow.com slash support. Our email address is feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. You can give us a call 512-59-DAILY. Listen to the show live Monday through Friday, 4.30 p.m. Eastern at Alpha Geek Radio. Visit our website, dailytechnewsshow.com. We are daily, we are tech, we are worldwide, and there is no stopping us. Tech news forever with Scott Johnson and Peter Wells from Australia tomorrow. The show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> worldwide. Worldwide. Exclusive. Exclusive, exclusive, exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> you do that every day. That was the greatest. <laughs> oh my god. That was a great show. What should we call it? That was a great show. We didn't even talk about Leap Second. No. You know, I had it no. I had it up there and then uh it wasn't on the subreddit, it wasn't on Tech Meme, it wasn't on Google News. Oh really? It's yeah. Like, like, and I, so I'm just like on the Twitter. We have talked about it before. I talked about it when I was on Twit two weeks ago. Right. Oh, but isn't it today? I thought it yeah, was it's today. tonight. Tonight. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter. I just thought on um, this is trending. I mean, this will be the last day the internet works, but. Yeah, so it <laughs> might have been worth a mention. I mean, maybe. But nobody will be able to tell we didn't mention it after all of society crashes. <laughs> <laughs> Twitter trending topics. Twitter. Yeah. I mean,. It's, a, it's one of those perennial topics, too. I remember we talked about it on Buzz Out Loud, not the last time, 2012, but 2008 time or nine. Yeah, maybe. What happened last year? Last year, there were a couple sites that went like American Airlines, I think. Yeah. They probably just blamed Leap Pandora. Second, but it's just generally there. Pandora went down. Rapitude. I mean, I, the, the, the big question would be, if one of these massive companies like, like Amazon, like, like if... if if let's say the 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 Grexit uh, that is happening right now in the European Union, uh, which by the way, is like a, a second reference in like respectable newspapers, which is insane. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, well, Grexit, no one seems yeah. to believe it. They're like, oh, they'll figure it out, and they've been. It's like, no, this this is not looking like. Oh, they'll figure it out at this point. Uh, oh it's no, a, it's and, a crisis for sure. So let's say that that, that triggers uh, worldwide economic hardship. And uh, a company like Amazon, which has a, a good war chest, but certainly operates in insane margins. Like, you know, they, they sell everything for $11 and it costs them $10.50 to buy it. Uh, that they go under, it would be so curious to see what happens with, like, that treasure trove of data and credit card information and consumer history. And, and, and stuff like that, especially that is uh, done authentication logins on so many other sites as well. Like, that's, that's a tremendous slice of the internet. Should we call this episode That's Radio? That's Radio. We should call it Worldwide. 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 All right, we'll call it Worldwide. Yeah. I think we just decided. Daily Tech News Show worldwide, like worldwide. Zane Lowe. The best thing with, I was I, is he plays like he does a big. It's my world record on the half hour. I would play a song that I believe is one of the most important in the world. It's Pharrell's exclusive new track. He plays it. He's like, it gets to the end. He's like, 
Those who know me know what I'm about to do because I do this sometimes. I'm going to play it again. And I'm like, that's that's it? You're just going to play the same thing. song again? That's your, de your deal? That's what that's you do? not very shocking. Also, and who knows him? BBC oh, One. And BBC One him? listeners oh, he's a would BBC know. One guy? Yeah. Okay. Well, and also, you know how I feel about DJs. So. He is worldwide. He's worldwide now, which is a huge thing. He's not Mr. Worldwide. That, of course, is Pitbull, who uh, graduated from, from Mr. 305. So uh, they... Um, I know my rent's going to be late about a week lesson. They, uh, I can't pay a dog. The funny thing about Zane Lowe is that he is like an especially sycophantic interviewer. Oh, really? Uh, if, if you... In fact, like one of the... the big like hey look how crazy Kanye West is interviews where he was like yelling about how he invented leather jogging pants and stuff like that and also acting like leather jogging pants were like a thing that everybody knew and has seen forever uh, that was an interview with Zane Lowe and, and Zane is like it does not matter what nonsense is coming out of your mouth which by the way for a music interviewer I, I assume this is probably something that is just an occupational hazard that has these space cadets are just prattering on. You have to just nod your head and say, like, oh, yeah, good point, good point. Uh, but he is, uh, he, he is something special, which is great for Apple because there is no musician who will blink at coming in and doing an interview with, with, with Zane Lowe. Sorry, I got distracted by the terrible news that Ben Affleck and Jennifer Garner have split up. <gasps> I know, Again? guys. Like, is there love in the world anymore? Wait, hold well, on, hold on. Up. Nope, wrong one. <laughs> oh. like, Wait, what? hold on, hold on. Here we go again. Nope, that one's not working either. <laughs> Never mind. Right. Uh, Take it back. What was trying to happen? No. Here, wait. Is, are you trying to play what's in the chat room? Yes. You got it. Worldwide exclusive. <laughs> Lucy, Lucy, Lucy. Uh, Thank you. Oh, awesome. Worldwide. Uh, yeah, I may well, not. Molly, I'm from Chicago. It's heartbreaking. Haven't, haven't you been following the fact that they've been, like, arguing about when to announce their divorce for, like, oh, six no. months? <laughs> no. Are you kidding me? No. Really? Damn it. Yeah. You know, yeah. I would know this if this lady had not stolen the Us Weekly right out from under me at the hairdresser the other day. What? I was about to get caught up on the news. Yeah, apparently they were arguing because he wanted it to be announced far enough away from Batman Superman so it wasn't just like, uh -huh. hey, look at divorced Batman over there. <laughs> That's <laughs> terrible. I'm sad. I love those two. Uh, me too. They be together too. for you to love them still or no? No. Well, then it's fine. It's the final tragedy befallen. I just, I like the idea of love. Being yeah. forever? Getting dashed like Amy Poehler and what's his butt? Will Arnett. Will Arnett. <laughs> Don't worry, you still have Chris Pratt and Anna I Farrah. was just, yes, I was about yeah, to bring up Chris true. Pratt. And at least Will and Jada are okay. <laughs> well... <laughs> well, the, uh, the, the church will see to that. Yeah, exactly. Well, it sounds like the church will see to Chris Pratt and Anna Ferris too, just a different church. Yeah. I was listening to an interview with Chris Pratt where he was talking about, like, on his honeymoon, they both suffered uh, some intestinal issues and uh, were, like, running back and forth to the bathroom. And it was like, like this sounds like a second act uh, a second act gag in a movie starring Chris Pratt and Anna Ferris. <laughs> it kind of does. <laughs> uh, hilarious. Their life is a movie. Hmm. I'll always think of her as lost in translation, Cameron, cheap Cameron Diaz imitation. Oh, yeah. So good. Hey, um, Roger, would you have time to do the video upload today? Is it, can you not hear me? I can hear you now. Now? Yep. Yes, I can do it. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, There's no response. It's like, oh, does not my microphone not not work? Not not work. Hey, <laughs> double, double negative. Uh, <laughs> by the way, did you guys cover this yesterday on the show? That uh, in the 
Hulk Hogan versus Gawker Media trial. God, yeah, I love did. that. That because uh, uh, he's suing Gawker. It, it's actually not. He's he's kind of got a case against uh, against Gawker for this uh, this this sex tape thing. Uh, the judge banned him from referring to himself. He's going to have to go by Terry Bollea. Mm-hmm. He can't go by Hulk. Um, but she has permitted him to wear a plain black bandana. <laughs> <laughs> I love that so much. You, you can know, wear think- a black bandana. Black, plain. Plain black bandana. No lightning bolts on it. No red and yellow bandana. This is a plain black bandana. Keep it black. I mean, it's a place of legal machination, so you got to show some respect. He does. Why is she allowing a bandana at all? I I don't know. Also, why is he pressing the issue to the point that she had to compromise and allow a plain bandana? That's hysterical. Maybe he's got, some some dude. Issues, he's got some issues with his hair implants, maybe. Like, you know how LeBron, when he stopped wearing the bandana, it was like, what's well, right here? Medical reason. Yeah. Sure. Could be. Well, he was also, he was getting, he was getting the Bosley treatment. He was, oh, uh, was he? Where was he getting the hair from? He doesn't have it. Back of his neck. Does he really? I thought he, I thought he was going like total. I didn't realize he had any hair left. No. Is no. it still considered a plain bandana if there's fake hair taped to the back of it? Oh, wait, are we talking about LeBron or, or Hulk? Hulk is... <laughs> I lost track. Twitter is so interesting right now, you guys. There's a bunch of crazy things happening. I what, what, what's going on? Nike chairman Phil Knight is stepping down. Oh, wow. Um, he just did it. Because Nike is, like, on fire. And then, of course, Misty, um, you know, what's her butt got that? You don't care about that. Uh, and then there was something else really interesting, but I already lost it. Misty, what's her butt? You, you know, that ballerina. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Getting promoted to principal dancer. No, I, I, I saw that. That's really cool. Oh, it was that Donald Trump has filed a, a $500 million lawsuit against NBC and Univision over can- them canceling his uh, Miss, Universal, Miss Universe, whatever, broadcast after he called all Mexican immigrants rapists. <laughs> I don't know why they wouldn't want to you know, run a you know, show. That's, that's presidential. That's presidential. Anyway. That's, um... I got distracted, and I apologize. I am on target. Stay on target. Uh, Copeland. So does he talk the same way, like, in court? Does he, like, normally does? Like, on... Or on Is he going to say, you know, Terry, whatever? Dude, I felt my privacy was really violated, brother. I went and clicked on my computer. (laughs) What's going on, brother? Oh, man, your sex tape's out, dude. Aw, I was just, I was really crushed, brother. Let me tell you something, Mean Gene. <laughs> Have you seen that documentary on Netflix on Shake, uh, the the Shake, uh, the wrestler? No, he was oh, one of the heavies. Iron it is one of the best documentaries I've seen in a while. It's Iron great. Is, the Iron is Sheik. Is yeah, extraordinary, uh, uh, an extraordinary story. Uh, I've not seen the documentary. I'm a little wary about some of the guys that he has around him. Like he has a very active Twitter account, but uh, I, it is certainly not him. Yes, uh, writing it. You see who it is in the documentary. You'll okay. see all that aspect of it. Good. Uh, but yeah, I mean that's a dude was a bodyguard for uh, for the Shah of Iran. For the Shah, uh, competed in the in the Olympics for Iran and uh, and then left and became. You know, live the American dream by coming the American nightmare, the uh, the the Iron Sheik. And what's so interesting is there's a little bit in there, and this is what's so fascinating because it ties in with the Hulk Hogan, how basically a match he played that he was told um, he could, he was paid to uh, not not to let Hulk Hulk Hogan win. Originally that was the deal, and I don't want to spoil it too much, but he was, the whole thing was choreographed, and he was gonna he was supposed Wait, to let what? Hulk win. Wait, guys, um, I, have to, I have to stop you here because I have to go. No, I'm sorry. Um, sorry. Well, then Justin's going to have to go pretty soon, too. <laughs> and I have to go, too. You yeah, know, well, he doesn't like, actually come into your house. I mean, if you want to come to my house to kill that spider, that would be awesome. But don't, do you have a car? Because you, you can do. Come back here. Oh, well, then, yes. <laughs> I will text you. Text me, your, text me your address. I'm not even joking about this. Bucket. Really? You just can't take a vacuum cleaner and suck it up? How do you know it hasn't moved? Is this know, how do you know it hasn't left the bathtub? Well, I checked on it right before the show. 
All right. Well, Molly, yeah. If, if, if you want me to come over, take, <laughs> I look, do. take, this, take this text message. Listen, no shame I'm, my game. I am out of the post. Uh, hey. Stay tuned for Night Attack with Justin Robert Young and Brian Brushwood later tonight. After Zane Lowe doesn't tell you about the schedule because that would just be ridiculous. You can find it yourself even though it's on a Tumblr blog that's hidden. Goodbye.